Hello friends, here in this video we will see a problem on helical compression spring for given load range and for that purpose here we have a question. I'll read what is given here. A helical spring is to be designed for an operating load range of approximately 90 Newton to 135 Newton. The deflection of the spring for the load range is 7.5 mm. Assume a spring index of 10. Permissible shear stress for spring material is 480 MPa. Modulus of rigidity 80 kN per mm square. Here we have to design the spring. So this is the question what we have. Now whatever is given in this question, I will write that in the form of data. Now, here as we look into this problem, it is given that a helical spring is to be designed for an operating load range. Here some load range is given. Means not a single value of load, but there would be one highest and one lowest value. So approximately 90 Newton to 135 Newton, this is the load range. So I'll write down 90 Newton as W1. and 135 Newton is W2. Now, after getting W1 and W2, what is the meaning of this load range is that here it means that whenever there is a load of 90 Newton, then above 90 Newton, the spring will start deflecting. Before 90 Newton, it won't deflect because this is the minimum load which is required on the spring. And maximum load is 135 Newton. So the spring will be deflecting only between 90 and 135 Newton. So here we can find out the total load therefore W will be the net load which is W2 minus W1. So it is 135 minus 90. So this W comes out to be 45 Newton. So now this is very very important. This 45 Newton is the value we have to use for designing such a spring. This 45 Newton is above 90 means once we reach the value of 90 then from that we have to start and we have to reach up to 135 Newton. So the difference between them is 45 Newton and hence this spring would be designed for 45 Newton. Next the deflection of the spring for the load range is 7.5 mm deflection is denoted by delta. Assume a spring index of 10, spring index is denoted by C, also called as spring capacity and that is equal to capital D by small d. Then permissible shear stress for spring material that is tau, it is 480, tau is 480 mega pascal, mega pascal means it is in terms of Newton per mm square. Modulus of rigidity is given 80 kN per mm square. So G is equal to 80 kN per mm square. I will convert this. It becomes 80 into 10 raised to 3 Newton per mm square. And here the question is design the spring. So for the data given here we have to design the spring this is the question for us now let us try to get the solution that is the design for this problem solution since load and deflection values are known so i can get the stiffness of the spring so stiffness 
of spring k is equal to load upon deflection. So, therefore, k will be equal to load is 45, deflection is given in the problem as 7.5, therefore, k value it comes out to be 6 Newton per mm. This is the stiffness of the spring. It means to deflect the spring by 1 mm, we require a minimum load of 6 Newton. Next, after getting the stiffness, since in this problem, shear stress tau is given, this tau is called as the resultant shear stress and I can say that since shear stress factor k suffix s that will be equal to 1 plus 1 upon 2 c. So, therefore, k suffix s that will be equal to 1 plus 1 upon 2 c and c is given in the problem as 10. So, from this I will get the value of shear stress factor and the answer is 1.05. After getting the shear stress factor, I can use the formula of resultant shear stress. Here, I will write down since resultant shear stress is given by tau is equal to it was 8 w d upon pi d cube multiplied by k s that is the shear stress factor. Now, if we look into this shear stress factor, then shear stress is known, the value of load is known, Ks we have calculated. So, capital D and small d both are unknown, but here we have only one equation and there are two unknowns. So, we cannot get the values. So, what we can do, we can use a relation that therefore, tau will be equal to 8w capital D upon small d that is called as spring index denoted by c. So, I will write down c upon pi into small d square because one small d I have used. So, and into k s this, that is the shear stress factor. I will write down since spring index is equal to capital D upon small d. So, therefore, here I will shift d square on one side. So, d square will be equal to 8 w c upon pi into tau will be in the denominator multiplied by k suffix s. Here I will go on putting the values 8 into load is 45, c value it was 10 pi into shear stress is given in the problem tau it is 480 Newton per mm square 480 multiplied by k s k s value it was 1.05 so from this first I will get the value of d square and then when I take the square root my answer of small d it comes out to be 1.58 mm so here the wire diameter is 1.58 but we need to increase the strength so what i'll do i'll increase this value and suppose i take the value as 4 mm because if i increase the diameter area increases and stress value will go on decreasing so here i'll take the wire diameter as 4 mm and this will be the first answer for us.
Now, after getting small d, that is the wire diameter as 4 mm. Wire diameter means a, diam a circular wire of 4 mm dia will be used to make this helical spring. Now, after getting small d, I'll say that since spring index C is equal to capital D upon small d. So, therefore, capital D will be equal to C into small d. C is given as 10. Small d we have calculated it is 4. So, therefore, capital D value comes out to be 40 mm. This will be the second answer. Now, as we are designing the spring, we have calculated the wire diameter and we have calculated the main coil diameter. After getting this, the next step is we will design the number of coils in the spring. So, I will say that number of coils we can get it from the formula of deflection. So, I will say that therefore, deflection of spring is given by deflection is equal to 8 w c cube n upon g d. This is the formula from which we can get the number of turns. In this formula, small n indicates the number of active coils. So, that we can find it out. Here I will write down therefore, small n will be equal to this is deflection g d will get multiplied. In the denominator here I have 8 w into c cube. So, next I will go on putting the values. Deflection, it is given in the question. Deflection was 7.5 mm. So, here 7.5. Next, capital G, its value was also given. Capital G was 80 into 10 raised to 3 Newton per mm square. So, 80 into 10 raised to 3. Small d is 4, we have calculated. In the denominator, we have 8 into 45 because that is the load for which we are designing the spring. Into c cube, c is 10. So, 10 cube. So, if I calculate this from this, I will get the answer of n and it comes out to be 6.67 or we can round it off to 7. So, therefore, I will say that number of active coils is equal to 7. Now, these are the active coils. They, are, they take part in the deflection. They take part when the load is applied. Now, from this, I can even calculate the total number of coils. So, I will say that assuming square and ground ends. Squared and ground end means since the spring is in the form of a wire, it is circular. So, if we keep that spring on any surface, there are chances of the spring to slip because the surface is circular. So, we are gr grinding that ends to make it in the form of a square so that it can be seated flat. So, therefore, assuming number of squared and ground ends, total number of coils will be equal to number of active coils which is n plus 2. So, therefore, total number of coils becomes n dash, I will denote it by n dash, n is 7 plus 2. So, here I am getting the total number of coils as 9 and this will be the third answer.
now after getting the total number of coils next we can find the solid length of the spring so i'll say that therefore solid length of spring l suffix s that will be equal to n dash into d which is the wire diameter so therefore solid length is equal to n dash it is 9 d is 4 so therefore solid length comes out to be 36 mm after getting solid length i'll explain what is the meaning of this suppose we have two supports here i am explaining what is the meaning of solid length now here i have drawn the diagram and when the spring is closed that is after the application of load when this spring it compresses completely that is each of the wire diameter will coincide here i can denote the wire diameters so these are the wire diameters if i can show the cut section of the spring and here i am drawing the section so now when we are compressing the spring in such a way that there is no gap in between and each of the wire diameters are in contact so that would be called as solid length and the solid length value we have calculated next after finding the solid length i'll say that therefore free length of spring this solid length we have found out solid length value was 36 mm that is in the closed condition when the spring is completely closed its length will be 36 mm then for free length the formula is lf is equal to solid length plus maximum deflection plus 15 percent if i write it in the number form it is 0 0.15 of maximum deflection so this is the formula of free length here therefore lf will be equal to solid length is 36 maximum deflection is given it is 7.5 15 percent 0.15 into 7.5 of maximum deflection so therefore free length value it comes out to be 44.63 mm this will be the fifth answer for us now once we have calculated free length i'll explain what is the meaning of free length for that suppose we have a diagram here here i am explaining what is the meaning of free length of spring now to explain free length here we have a diagram this is called as the free length of the spring it is the length of the spring in the unloaded condition this is the free length of the spring when it is not loaded in the unloaded condition and that is solid length plus maximum deflection plus 15 percent of maximum deflection the value we have got it is 44.63 mm now after getting this free length of the spring free length as i have told lf indicates 
द लेंथ ऑफ स्प्रिंग इन अनलोडेड कंडीशन सो यर वी हैव गॉट फ्री लेंथ नाउ आफ्टर गेटिंग फ्री लेंथ नेक्स्ट आई कैन कैलकुलेट द पिच एंड वॉट इज पिच इफ आई टेक a point on a spring that is on a single turn if i take a point then on the next turn i have to take the point at the same location and if i measure this linear distance this linear distance would be called as the pitch so here we even want to know how much should be the pitch for this helical spring so here i'll say that therefore pitch of spring is given by p is equal to lf upon n dash minus 1 so therefore pitch will be equal to free length we have got just now it was 44.63 upon n dash minus 1 the total number of turns in this problem we have calculated it was 9 so 9 minus 1 from this i'll get the answer of pitch the value is 5.58 mm so after the free length the next thing which we have calculated it is the pitch free length it was our answer number 5 pitch will be the sixth answer now once we have found out the pitch here i can denote all the values of the dimensions on the spring so here again i will be drawing a spring i'll explain this diagram here again i am drawing a helical spring here i, I have drawn the diagram of a helical compression spring now in this helical compression spring this section is the wire diameter i'll mark on the dimensions first of all the wire diameter we have calculated this diameter of wire it was 4 mm then we had even calculated that the mean coil diameter it is this distance you can say the mean diameter outer diameter and then there would be core diameter if we take the mean this becomes the mean coil diameter and the value in this problem it was 40 mm then after that we have calculated the solid length solid length value was 36 mm then we had calculated how much was the stiffness of the spring and that stiffness value was 6 stiffness was 6 newton per mm then free length of the spring free length was 44.63 mm after free length we had even calculated the total number of coils and total number of active coils so i'll write down there for total number of coils and active coils active coils were denoted by n value was 7 
and total number of coils were denoted by n dash value was 9. So these parameters we have calculated in this problem and even pitch, pitch distance. This is 5.58 mm. This pitch we have calculated and for a helical compression spring, this pitch value will remain same throughout. So here the diagram is of a helical compression spring. As we look into the problem, there was load range given because this problem was based on the load range. It was 90 Newton to 135 Newton. And as I've explained in this problem, when the spring would be loaded, once the load is up to 90 Newton, it is 90. Then only the spring will deflect. Otherwise, spring won't deflect. So the minimum load is 90. Under that, it will deflect. And this value of load will go on increasing up to 135. So the load range we have taken from 90 to 135. The difference was 45 Newton. And we have designed the spring considering 45 Newton above 90 Newton. So for that purpose, whatever the unknown values were there, which are necessary for designing the spring that we have found out starting with the diameter of wire, mean coil diameter. Then we have calculated stiffness. After that, we have calculated the solid length. Next, there was number of active coils, number total number of coils because this upper and below two coils do not take part in the deflection then we have calculated free length and finally we have calculated the pitch and with this we complete this design